Good morning. Uh, it is a gorgeous morning, and we are in, in front of, I am in front of gorgeous people, so it is lovely to see you. Um, if you are visiting with us this morning, please, um, if you could fill out our connection card so we may... Uh, acknowledge your visit and also today is United Women in Faith Day and uh, we are celebrating that today. Also following uh, today's service there is a dessert cook-off and I know that um, you all want to go and test the um, desserts presented because you all are the judges. <laughs> so, um, also, there is a um, beach bag mission, and there is a basket in the narthex in which you can make those donations. Welcome again to Community United Methodist Church, and um, let us stand if you are able. Um, to sing praise to the Lord, the Almighty.
It is my pleasure to announce the recipient of the Women in, Women in Faith pin. Um, she has served on the board most recently as the spiritual growth leader and has co coordinated UWF Sundays as well as spiritual growth meetings. She provides devo devotions for the United Women in Faith board meetings. She was an active member of Loyalty Circle and is now with Hope Circle due to the circles merging. She is co-leader of the leadership team. She is a retired Navy officer and is the wife of a retired Navy officer. She is active with the women's rights through her current full-time civilian work position with the Navy. This position offers an opportunity for her to travel extensively. She also earned her PhD. She is the mother of a son who is a Navy pilot and a daughter who is a high school music teacher. She is the grandmother of three girls and one boy. It is with pleasure to announce that this pin is going to Dr. Beth Lape. <laughs> Unfortunately, Beth isn't here today because she had to go out of town for a funeral, but we still want to recognize her because she deserves it. Thank you. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit and join me in our call to worship. Our Lord comes to us through servants who witness on his behalf. Many, Many servants. We fail to recognize. The judgment, Jesus said, separates those who are receptive from those who reject our Lord's witness. Join me as we affirm our faith together using the, mod, the affirmation from 1 Corinthians and from Colossians. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. Please be seated.
as we prepare for prayer, I cannot think of a more fitting song than one that reminds us of redemption. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, in a world that seems to have lost its mind and its way, we come to you this morning not just seeking answers, but seeking strength and wisdom for the days ahead. We pray for courage to be the people you have called us to be, people who seek justice and peace through your love for all of your people. We struggle with questions that seem to have no answers and problems that have insurmountable solutions. How did we become so divided? How has leadership throughout the world become so selfish that we find ourselves on the brink of war? We ask for your intervention and guiding those in leadership. There is no doubt that we humans must test your patience. But we know that your love is all-encompassing, never-ending, always forgiving. This is our hope, that you love us unconditionally. For we know and struggle with our imperfections and our shortcomings. Know all the while that in the end, it is you who loves us the most and is always there waiting for us to seek repentance, to seek you. Jesus is our hope for the world, and it is this hope that we live and move and have our being in. Help us to be more like Christ, who you sent to show us how to live and respect others. Help us to truly understand that if we are one with Christ, we have to be one with each other. Today, oh God, we ask your blessings for families in whatever forms they may be, for all need patience and understanding and unconditional love to provide care and protection for children. Allow for care and compassion for all those in need of health care. We have the tools to prevent crisis situations. Help us to remember that Jesus asked that we not judge, that we not throw stones. We are also mindful of those in our congregation who are sick and hurting in any way. Give them peace and strength to face their situations. Give strength to the addicted. Comfort and sustain those who are victims of violence. Help us to find ways to offer hope to those who have lost it. Though it is difficult, we also lift up those who are bullies, individuals who are perpetrators of harm, those who feel the need to put down others by demeaning them with jokes. For these too need your love. Use people in their lives to show them a different path, to call out these abuses and lead them to a path of goodness and hope. Gracious God, we ask you to help us to be change agents in this world. Give us courage to speak out about our faith, 
to teach those around us about your love for all people and to lead by example, showing and speaking with respect to others. All these things we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. At this time, I would like to invite any children ages three through third grade who would like to go to children's worship to find Miss Andrea at the back of the sanctuary. As the ushers come forward, will you join me please in a prayer for our offering? Generous God, help us to appreciate all that we have and to acknowledge the abundance we enjoy. Compassionate God, help us to recognize the needs of so many in our community much closer than we might want to admit. Empowering God, grow in us the commitment to make a difference to those in need. Holy God, use us and these gifts to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and honor your presence in all people. Make us an answer to someone else's prayers. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Our scripture today is from the 25th chapter of Matthew, verses 31 through 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from, from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did this to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Amen. Good morning. I'm Cheryl Freeman. I have the honor of being president of the UWF here. I'll get it straight. <laughs> at Community. Our 150-year-old legacy began with a few bold women determined to change the world for the better. In 1869, two wives of missionaries to India made a plea to eight women in Boston about the spiritual and physical needs of poor women in India. They could not be treated by male doctors, and schooling for girls was almost non-existent. Help was desperately needed. In what became a legacy of showing up and getting things done, the attendees were moved to action. Thus began the Methodist Women's Foreign Missionary Society. That same year, this newly formed organization raised funds and sent an educator and a doctor to India. A school for girls was started and the first women's hospital in Asia was founded. Both institutions continue to serve the people of India today. Today, UWF has about a half a million members, and CUMC has 80 members that continue that legacy. As our purpose states, we connect and nurture women through Christian spiritual formation, leadership development, creative fellowship, and education so that they can inspire, influence, and impact local and global communities. Our speakers today, Linda Rowland and Susie Reel, saw a need in our community a few years ago concerning our local children. And like our predecessors, they were determined to change the world for the better. I'm so glad they are here today to tell us about this ministry that they began. So, Susie and Linda. Good morning. All right, we're going to be sharing this microphone, so hopefully you all can hear us. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Okay, good. All right, as Cheryl said, we are retired educators, and in your bulletin, it does say that it's uh, Linda Locklear. Linda Locklear is sitting in the back row. This is Linda Rowland. <laughs> so they're just the last names just sort of got. I invited her to do my part, but she said no. <laughs> exactly. So with that said, we are both retired, ed retired, big words, retired there, and we're glad now that we are. And um, so with that said, 
Linda worked in the Virginia Beach school system, city, Virginia Beach city school system, I have to put the word city in there, as uh, a support system. She had multi, she was multifaceted in her, all of her tasks. And I worked most of my career in Norfolk, and no, notice how I say that word, okay. Everybody has different pronunciations of no. that name. No. <laughs> so I'm b b saying it carefully. And, but then I also have, I should say we, my husband and I also had a distinct honor and privilege to be able to go overseas and teach. And we taught in Abu Dhabi in the UAE. And I'm saying that now because of, it's very pertinent what's happening in the world right now. We worked in an international school and I say that with honor and privilege, I really am repeating myself because it was very important and it's very pertinent today that because of so many things that are happening in the world that a lot of people are affected and I'll leave it at that because there are always two sides to every story. We lived and worked with Arabs and Palestinians, with Jewish people from Israel and people from all over the world and we just hope that people can remember to compromise and to learn to live and love each other. We were able to work together for several years. I'm just hoping we can have peace in the world. So with that, <laughs> I will move on. I had to, my husband said, don't say anything, Susie, but I just had to get it in. Okay, I'm gonna give you, <laughs> sorry, you know, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do a teacher thing here and I wrote, write it down so I can get it correct. And it says, the student is talking to his or her parents. It says, I think I need a new teacher. And the parent said, why is that? And this, uh, the child, the student says, our teacher doesn't know anything. She's always asking us for the answers. <laughs> Which is very true. Okay, uh, another one, and I'm gonna hold on to this one. And before I go any further, most of the people that were up here talking from the UWF were t uh, retired educators, including, you know, Jen and Cheryl, Linda and myself, were all, uh, we are now retired, but we're used to working with s smaller people, shorter people, so if you feel so desired to shift down in your seat a little bit, <laughs> that would make it a little bit easier for us to go, oh, hey, we're talking to our what we're used to talking to. All right, so here's the next one. Um, it says, what is the most, the teacher is asking the class, what is the most common phrase used in school? And the, a student responds, raising a hand, and he said, I don't know. <laughs> and the teacher responds with, correct. <laughs> okay, with that, Cheryl did a really good job sharing about what the UWF has, is a group of women, but we are a group of women who are working for women as well as for children with a common cause of wanting the better well-being of both women's position in the world and children's position in the world. So the UWF has just within the last year has changed a name and we keep going with <laughs> Linda and I keep going back and forth. Um, you, now I'm saying, I can't even say it the wrong way, the other way. So but anyway, we've had many names through the years. So, but it is a women for, it's a group for women and for children. And because we are retired and because we are, have the uh, availability to do something else than teach, this is where we are. So, uh, shift over to Linda. We were talking one day about the needs of kids and in schools, and we thought, got to thinking about and heard about the, beach, the um, Virginia Beach School Beach Bag Program. And we decided, this is neat. We learned a little bit more about it ourselves, and then we brought it back to our circle. And everybody got excited that this is to help kids that provide, you know, the school system provides breakfasts and lunches, but there's nothing on the weekend sometimes for people that don't have if they're instable with, uh, unstable with their food. So we came back to our circle, <coughs> to Hope Circle, and they got excited like we did. There was a chance that we could get out and help uh, the kids on the weekends. Think about it, it's not easy for us sometimes. So we uh, came back 
and then all of a sudden we decided this was going to be as a circle our primary mission and uh, we so far and it's we went and talked about a lot of us has are connected to Kempsville Elementary School I was there, we have some teachers from there, we have some that have personal connection there. And this has been our school that our focus. And uh, so we are been going on for about five years now. And A little over five, yeah. And we have, uh, the bag, <coughs> beach bag program started in 2009. And, uh, and it's, uh, uh, as I said, they have reduced breakfast and reduced um, lunch, but now, with the reduced price lunch. Reduced, no, they don't have a re reduced breakfast, no. sorry. <laughs> okay, reduced price. But they now, with there was nothing on the weekends for the kids. So through the beach bags, we can do this to help them have a little bit more food. Think about it. Sometimes, you know, uh, there's, things are pricey out there. And you know, sometimes it has to do with maybe, I'm not saying, you know, some people might have trouble paying electricity, paying the rent, paying house payment. This, maybe sometimes food is not always there, or slim. Anyway, uh, parents and teachers agree that the short-term hunger has immediate impact on students' alertness, behavior, and academic achievement. And that's a quote from the Beach Bag website. Okay, my turn now. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna, I'm, I get to be the bearer of sort of boring news, but sort of, I think it's sort of pertinent that you, uh, to share. What is, the children are identified as food insecure. And there is actually a federal uh, and international and guidelines for what is considered food insecurity, whether it be no matter at what age level. So the beach has adopted the federal guidelines. So I'm gonna read directly what the, the well, I skipped ahead. But anyway, there are four attributes of food insecurity, and they are quantitative, qualitative, psychological, and social. I'm repeating those because then I'm going to go back over them. There are quantitative, qualitative, psychological, social. Quantitative meaning insufficient quality, quantity of food. Qualitative, inadequate food availability. Psychological, which I think we can think about, is the fact that they're worrying about where's my next meal? When am I going to get to eat? And that impacts them. And then the social of they're hungry. It, they're, they're at lunch or they're coming home and their stomach is growling and they don't know how to deal with that. And so they're also embarrassed, ashamed, all of those emotions. So we have several different, a lot, lot of different factors going along with food insecurity. And it could be as, in, as physical where the child happens to be smaller, shorter in stature or whatever, or thinner because they just plain haven't had enough food to eat to grow like they needed to grow. And so with that said, um, it is con a condition assessed in the food insecurity survey which is there is an international one, assesses the household level of economic and social condition of a limited or of uncertain access to adequate food. There is even a universal, like I said, screening tool, and it's called the universal hunger, hunger vital sign. Okay, with that, I go to the next page. Maybe. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, now I get to do the boring part. And that's the statistics. Did I say that word right? Statistics. Okay. All right. Um, you have it up there. Next slide. The statistics. Okay. Uh, in a relatively recent statistical survey, Virginia alone has 704,270 people who are facing hunger. 8.1% of the population or 164,680 of those people are children, or 11.1% of our population is considered food unstable, and it's the children. Pretty astounding, we think it's pretty astounding and pretty scary 
that we have this many ch children in our, just in our state alone, or our commonwealth alone, who are considered food unstable. Okay, so like Linda said before, we reached out, and this is how we've come to be. I did a contact, uh, there's a beach bag program coordinator with the city, and she was able to give me some statistics, sent me the rest of them. And it says, during the school year, and her name is Renee Yearling, if anybody wants to contact her, she was very, you know, forthright with a lot of information. Uh, in the school year 2022-23, over 41,000 bags were distributed to the neediest students. So far since January of this year, there have been 28,000 bags distributed. Okay, unfortunately with reduced monetary and food donations, the students only get bags twice a month from the school system. This is where Linda and I, and with the help of, you, I'm, you, I almost said it, the UWF and other sources which she will share, we've been able to work within KES, Kempsville Elementary School. So with that, I was also able, and she said, oh, this was the huge one, 50% of the student population in the Virginia Beach City School System qualifies for reduced or free lunch. 50%. When she shared that with me, I was just, sorry, but I was sort of astounded. I worked in Norfolk, so that's a different population that is, it's probably closer to 80% there. But we live in a, we have a mentality of a more fluent area and we aren't that if we have 50% that can qualify. So we both thought that that was a pretty pertinent, important uh, piece of information. With talking to, we work with the school guidance counselor at Kempsville, and we had the, my husband and I were able to speak with her a couple weeks ago, and, uh, and she shared that there's a, a military liaison. There are several military liaisons that are in the school system that work with military families. So we were able to speak with her directly and she shared some more astounding information was the fact that many of the families are underserved partly because they are embarrassed and the other part of the kids, they don't understand. They don't really know what's available to them or they're sort of somewhat intimidated. As an educator, I often saw that in child study, parents can be intimidated by not understanding and feeling comfortable so they don't wanna reach out. So we've got a huge percentage of the of military population that we're not able to serve either because they haven't been identified. So with that, we are, and if you have any questions about what I've just said or what Linda's saying through, a lot of this information that we have, are sharing is on the website, the Virginia Beach Beach Bag Program website. So, your turn. <laughs> really? How does it, <clears throat> I'm sorry about my throat. How does the Beach Bag water. Program work? <laughs> uh, volunteers bag, uh, city volunteers bag, the weekends and sometimes school breaks for identified students on all of the 82 schools who have been registered and requested. And, uh, and with this support from the Ladies from Hope, we have been able to do it uh, for two uh, every other weekend and uh, to get food to them. And we have this tremendous support group, the Ladies from Hope, the UF, uh, UWF board, sorry, <laughs> the Alpha Delta Kappa Honorary International Organization for Women it is a teacher sorority, uh, family, friends, as well as complete strangers. And we'll talk about that later. We, people are so interested in what we do. And we're able to send home bags every two weeks that the system cannot do. Um, Kempsville has become our focus in Hope Circle's mission, and we have served food. And that's you, you have the what we have in the bags, it's up. And uh, we have a certain thing we put out that we're supposed to give. We go by the guidelines, we put a, a box of cereal, uh, milk, 
a protein, two proteins, and that could be macaroni, box of macaroni and cheese, soup, uh, Chef Bordy, chicken. Uh, chicken, tuna, and uh, we, spam. Yeah. We can't forget spam. <laughs> and we have a great tuna nuda casserole that we send yeah. that in the recipe. And you'll hear about that. <laughs> uh, but uh, we have been very successful to do this every other weekend where, as, you sa as she said, lots of times they don't get something out. It, um, so. Okay. We'll have to say, I'm going to add, that the five categories that we deliver, we put in each bag each, uh, uh, for the weekends. We do two bags on the weekends for each student. But anyway, they don't necessarily align with the FDA food categories, but we do, like we do snacks or whatever, we try to do the best that we can as far as giving them nutrition, and same thing with cereal, it's hard. <laughs> because the kids don't want things like, you know. They, they specify the a uh, salty, a sweet, a regular, you know, sweet, sweet. It's like their treat or their dessert or whatever, cookies. And uh, so it's we the try other to category. go by. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, the other category. yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so I get to be the person of the bear of bad news in case it ever again is that. In case you haven't gone grocery shopping recently, I'm just going to enlighten you, try it, and then go in with a certain amount of food, uh, a monetary budget, and then figure out, hey, hey, I'm not getting everything that I needed on that list. In other words, inflation is hit. That's part of the big reason that we're here, is that we're struggling, and uh, assistance is needed, please. <laughs> You might hear that as we're continuing to talk. So we do have, we're, it's gotten much more expensive. We started off with a much smaller group of, uh, thank heavens, it was a much smaller, but unfortunately the group of students has increased and the budget that we have had has now, and I think that's what's up there now, is how much each bag is costing. And what we've done is divided the bags for A, 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 a bag, which would be for Friday, and B bag, which would be for Saturday. And we identify all the groups and put something in. And with that, we decided, talking to the guidance counselor, that it was too expensive us for us to continue doing individual cereal boxes, individual milk cartons, because the milk carton alone, what was it, Linda? For, for the milk cartons, the individual milk cartons. This, well, the six pack of six, if you go to the grocery store, the little individual, they were $7 a pack, about $1.50 a piece mm -hmm. for individual. For eight ounces. And now, so what we've decided, to, after talking to the guns counselor and she agreed, we're feeding the family. We actually can buy the bigger boxes of cereal not the giant size, but the bigger boxes of cereal, by a, Linda's our milk, she and John, husband are the milk people, and whatever. And a carton of milk for $1.50. $1.25, the $1.25 straight. Don't, don't inflate it anymore yet. <laughs> anyway, okay. Unfortunately, I think you get the gist. The pricing, it was more expensive for us to continue working with individual Containers, Micro microwavable, microwavable containers of mac and cheese or Chef Boyardee or whatever, because they're like $1.50 for each one of those, and it serves one. We can do, and yes, I'm the cook, and I do like to do recipes, so we've been able to do, I'll send recipes, make up recipes for the, the parents or whatever to use, so they can combine whatever. Okay, where are we? So do I, am I finished my section? Are we on to you now? Yes, we're on no, to you. No, <laughs> you're going. Larger quantities, it's right. We're going quick. Okay, we need to extend time. <laughs> I know. No, I'm not going to do that to you. Um, we're we're toward the end. Toward the end. Okay, we should be on slide six. The, the program. You're on the Virginia Beach program. Patient, please. Yeah. 
We're over it's here. two people. Sometimes it's, you know. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going ahead? Yeah. Just do it. Which is the beach bag program. Okay, wait a minute. Seven, eight. Okay. <laughs> yes. We already said which was in each bag. And with the adjustment, we've talked about the larger quantities. And, okay, what, what was what food insecure? So, what we've already talked about this. And oh, I took over your job. Yeah, I think you did. <gasps> I'm sorry. Where do we bag it? What do we do? I, I'm sorry. I took over her job. I apologize. Where do we do it? Well, you can do that then. Okay, <laughs> we actually do the bagging in my garage. We have... Um, I, we ran out to my husband, one of his, uh, one of his uh, tall racks, and uh, we bag there. Uh, we uh, put out, uh, we take it in on Tuesdays, uh, Thursdays and Fridays, and uh, uh, we all go out and take the food. Uh, there are deliverers. We have to buy the food first. We, we have to give food. our husbands credit. Oh, that's right. We take our husbands, we go shopping with our husbands, and we uh, find the best deals. Uh, my husband's gotten really good about knowing exactly. We buy 30 uh, cartons of milk uh, to put at the bags. Uh, For every one, two weeks. One packing every two weeks. And uh, the best buys that you can find, Teeter's Vegetables has, canned vegetables has the best we find. They're expensive. Harris Teeter's, since if you don't know Harris that. Teeter, they have the <laughs> best. Wegman, stuff like that. 79 cents, uh, 97 cents, but that's hard to find these days. Uh, then we bag, and uh, yeah, I would say that both of our husbands. I was out shopping. My husband and I were out shopping the other day, and he automatically went into let's go. To, he went to go look for cereal yeah. to check the price of cereal. It's like our husbands go. We don't go necessarily shopping together. We go, you know, with our spouses. But they are on the same page that we are. Okay, I'm going to look for this. I'm going to look for that. And let's go look for the vegetables. And it's macaroni and cheese on sale. And, and uh, then we we'll have compare a, notes. Yeah. Yeah. To say, okay, I just found, should I go ahead and get it? And I said, go ahead and get it, or she'll say the same thing to me. Should I go ahead and get it? And I'll say yes. Or, you know, and the pantry it. here has been wonderful. Every once in a while, we go in there and big stacks of stuff. Our circle members are constantly, uh, when they find that we have needs, we have stuff at our front doors. So we've had a lot of support in that, and we appreciate it very much. Very, yes. And, but we have to say, give, we have to give a lot of credit to our spouses because they have been understanding very understanding and if you got, if anybody wants to know the prices of things all four of us are very good at it now because we have been doing this for five years and when people say I can't shop at Harris Teeter it's too expensive or I can't shop at Wegmans it's too expensive that's not true that's not necessarily the case it just depends upon what we buy we find example I'm just throwing it out she called me the other day and said I found mac and cheese not craft, but still mac macaroni and cheese for 50 cents. That was at Wegmans. So to say two for a dollar. You did the math no, there, good. No. no, that's what they said. <laughs> that's what they said. <laughs> it was right there. Okay, we have to put some humor here because it's a very serious topic because we're, we're there is supposed to be a basket or some sort of a, maybe even a big bin out in the narthex out there. So if anybody's inclined to put a whole bale full of, of money out there, we will not turn it down. Okay, whatever, any donations. So with that, I think the last one up there is the four of us. The last slide is the four of us this past winter in the garage bagging and you can see that we've got our winter coats on <laughs> and that gives an example of the other thing that we didn't that I jumped over my fault was the fact that we do forever all the holidays we do something for the children they get a valentine we'll get a card and just say for our and at Christmas uh, I'm the member of the Alpha Delta Kappa ADK organization sorority and I jumped into them and I said, we need books for the kids for Christmas. So uh, Circles jumped in and gave us the food. My chapter got us the, the books that we needed. So every child at Christmas had a book, had a toy, had special treats, little special fun treats. 
dollar games, you know, stuff like that. So, so we uh, try and make, even though that's not just for food, they're hungry, but they were trying to make them feel that they're special as well. And so this is what we've been, we've been very good, been very, we're very frugal, but I'm just saying we've been able to do that. And we sign, we're considered the beach bag buddies and we'll sign like the Valentine card or something like this from your beach bag buddies. And during the summer, and I've also jumped into my chapter um, for, we need books for the summer, the Brain Quest books, and saying, because they're not cheap, and we'll send home the workbooks for the summer for the kids, writing implements, whether it be for the kindergartners or the pre-K crayons or markers or something, and then we'll just send journals home. And I'll, uh, we type up example of what to, you know, and how to use this for the parents, let's put it this way, send home the letter and say for the journal, this is what you can do for each grade level. You know, so it gives them an idea of how they can work with their child. So we're trying to, it's the teacher in us that can't quit being teachers. But there's some wonderful Christians, and we'll close with this out there. We were buying the milks one day and went oh, up yeah. to pay the 30 milks, and they said they're paid for. And I said, what do you mean? And they said, the lady behind you that just went, that was right in front of you, she paid for all your milks. Another day, I, you know, if you're slag, slip, slipping on, you know, all the bottles of milk, and I go, yeah, we do beach bags. And this young girl, she might have been 20, she said, oh my gosh, beach bags? She said, I had beach bags. And she said, that was the most wonderful thing for my mother. This is what we're reaching out there. Yeah, this is what we're seeing. Thing. She's had the same thing. That's our strangers. We were saying strangers. We've had, and we've had other women stop. What church do you belong to? Can we belong? Can we do? And I said, well, you can check into this and get this program. They thought it was such a wonderful program. Hopefully, they've started at her end. Yeah. You know, so it, I think we know. For us, it's a labor of love. Thank you. It's for a passion. Listening. It really and truly is. I mean, and the ladies of hope are here today, and we thank them so much. So we'd like anybody that's part of UWF, please stand up to be recognized because you are part of doing wonderful things for women and children in the world and our community. So if you're in UWF, stand up, please. Wow. Hot day. Should we say the thank you? Should we say the prayer? And yes. Thank you, sign language, thank you. So with that, we would like to, I'm hoping we didn't keep you too long. Thank you for being patient. And to teachers who like to talk to children, but are not as comfortable talking to more adult people. <laughs> I didn't say senior, I said adult people. We, okay. We would like to close in prayer. Dear okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this opportunity on you UWF Sunday to share our passion and mission for children by giving out the beach bags. We are so very blessed in so many ways. We know we can't help all the children, but you have given us a way that we can help a few or some of them. We know you are with us on our journey. Blessings to all the givers and the receivers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. We appreciate it. And now, if you are able, please stand as we join together in the hymn, O Church of God United, we will sing verse one and verse four. One and four. <laughs>
hear these words of benediction. We will go now into God's world to serve Jesus' sisters and brothers, to share the spirit with everyone we meet. May the grace of Christ surround you, the love of God astound you, and the Holy Spirit keep you this day and forevermore. Amen.